Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is March the 22nd, 2024. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's get way off the main road here. I mean well off the main road. Uh, between you and me, these are the videos that I like to think about the most, right? Ben Davison, uh, Anthony Joshua's current trainer, in an interview said that he wanted AJ to fight Usyk again, more than he wanted AJ to fight Tyson Fury. Now, it's my belief that Tyson Fury, for all of his problems, Yes, that was him on the canvas against Francis and Ghana. For all of Tyson Fury's problems, I believe Tyson Fury beats Anthony Joshua, right? Even this new improved version of Anthony Joshua. I also believe that trainers look at Usyk as a smaller man. They see Joshua's punching power. They know Joshua's tools. And I believe countless trainers believe that with the right guidance, Anthony Joshua can beat Alexander Usyk, right? You know, this video is really about personality. It's bigger than boxing. It really has a lot to do with life. It actually impacts sports betting. Let's talk about it. Now, there's a great gambler. Um, if you don't know of him, you need to know of him. His name is Billy Walters. I followed Billy Walters for years, right? And Billy Walters is one of these guys. He doesn't like betting props. He likes betting teams, right? Winners, point spreads, etc. Over-unders. But understand, Will Billy Walters gave an interview before the uh, NFL playoffs, where he was talking about Lamar Jackson, uh, the MVP, the quarterback of the number one seed in the AFC, the Baltimore Ravens, who, of course, had a spectacular defense this year. So he was talking about Lamar Jackson at a time when I thought Baltimore had a clear path to the Super Bowl, right? It was clear, and they had destroyed the San Francisco 49ers, who would be the one seed in the NFC on Christmas Day, right? I thought certainly Lamar had everything going for him this year. Home field, Pat Mahomes was on the road in the playoffs. Pat had to go to places like Buffalo, cold weather cities, um, you know, I thought, no way, no way was Pat Mahomes going to be able to outplay Lamar Jackson, particularly after an MVP season. And Billy Walters in an interview basically said, look, Lamar Jackson just can't handle my words, not Billy Walters' words, just can't handle abundance. In the playoffs, his personality just doesn't really allow him to take advantage of the moment. Right? The playoffs are made for Pat Mahomes, who's able to rise to the occasion, who's better in big games than it is someone like Lamar Jackson. And, of course, Baltimore played Kansas City in Baltimore, and let's just say Lamar Jackson was not prime Lamar Jackson. We don't talk about it enough, but personality... The ability to handle abundance, who the guy is, the person's adaptability matters greatly, right? People here know that I do true crime videos. That YouTube channel is Esquire777, right? And it's amazing how in true crime videos, a person's personality will take over, will lead them to make mistakes. Understand, Ted Bundy 
seemed to have it all. He's an excellent cook. The women around him liked him. Understand, he had a steady girlfriend. He had a political career that he was trying to get started. He had enough on his plate. But understand, for Ted, because of his personality, that wasn't enough. Right? This isn't Son of Sam, a guy who can't get a girlfriend. Ted Bundy, with a girlfriend, decided he was going to go out, meet, and kill other women. He put a lot of time into it. Understand, Bundy had to go out and get a fake arm sling. Bundy had to go out and get fake handcuffs. Right? Bundy had to go out and get the stuff he used for his crimes. Then he would do things like show up at a lake. I'm not kidding. Lake Samarish. He would show up at a lake with, you know, this getup, right? His arm in a sling. And he would approach several women with stories about how he just needed their help. If they could just follow him to his Volkswagen car and help him do some things that he couldn't do by himself because he was injured. Understand, Bundy, with a girlfriend and a life, needed this other life, which was high risk, which involved murder. It's even worse than that. After Bundy kills people, Bundy would return to the crime scenes, just like some arsonists will return to the scene of their arson to look at the fire department put out the flames. I have no doubt, because of personality, that Mike Tyson against Jake Paul is going to come across the ring and is going to try to be alpha the first three rounds of that fight. I have no doubt about that at all, because I understand that's who Mike Tyson is. Now, Tyson has his own problems. They start when the other guy survives the first three rounds. When the other guy actually starts questioning Tyson's alpha status. Right? Look at the Danny Williams fight carefully. The Evander Holyfield fight was even more disturbing for Tyson. Right? Tyson came out. Tyson expected Holifield to move away from him. Holifield instead moved to him. Holifield did not concede the idea that Tyson was better deep in the pocket. Tyson gets so frustrated that he bites Holifield's ear. Understand, that wasn't enough because the referee, Mills Lane, lets the fight continue. It's after the fight continues that Tyson bites Holifield's ear again. If I were in Jake Paul's corner, I would tell him, player, you need to turtle the first three rounds. Your concern should be throwing enough punches so that the ref doesn't stop the fight. We need to work on you hugging Mike Tyson the first three rounds. The question is, if you're still standing in the fourth round, what does Tyson do? Right? Mike Tyson, to me, is a bit of a front runner. Right? It's after Buster Douglas is still hanging around, gets off the canvas, that you notice Tyson is in deep trouble. Right? Understand, some of the fights Tyson lost, he started fasting. Right? That Buster Douglas fight, the Danny Williams fight. Right? Tyson is the opposite of Anthony Joshua. Joshua is a cautious giant. Right? He's the guy with the big punch who is cautious. 
He doesn't want to take risks early. He wants you to make the first move. He wants to counter you. Now that doesn't work well against a natural risk taker. Here is where Tyson Fury enters the room. Right? Understand the brilliance of Tyson Fury is that he, number one, is highly skilled. He can fight a lot of different ways. Number two, if he shows up and you're willing to give him the early rounds, he's not bashful. He'll take the early rounds. By the time a guy like Anthony Joshua is actually ready to get desperate, to actually try to throw big punches, to actually take chances to knock him out. I'm guessing Tyson Fury would have a, what, three, four round lead in the fight? Right, folks, that's just the way it is. Let me just say, there's footage out there. In fact, I made a video that included the footage. It was that jarring to me. I decided, you know what, let me take time and rather than just talk, let me actually splice the fight film into the video. I did a video on Anthony Joshua against Vladimir Klitschko after that fight. And if you look at the video, understand Anthony Joshua drops Vladimir Klitschko. I hope I didn't say Vitaly earlier. He drops Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko gets up. This is Joshua's moment. This is his moment to get the KO. To be dominant. He hasn't been dropped in the fight himself. So the punch Joshua uses, it's moments like this when you figure out the guy's most effective tools. He has Vladimir Klitschko badly hurt in front of him. Joshua starts throwing left hooks. Folks, Anthony Joshua doesn't throw a lot of left hooks in fights. When you see him throwing the left hook, you understand he can throw that left hook with power. He can maintain his balance. Folks, the punch is missing from his fights against Southpaw Alexander Usyk. Right, so understand... It's a personality thing. Just like I know Mike Tyson's going to be in trouble if Jake Paul is energized and is still standing at the beginning of the fourth round. I'm expecting Tyson to win that fight. But understand, if Jake Paul is able to survive the part of the fight where Tyson comes in, hides his body, is pursuing him, is on his front foot, is being alpha, if Jake Paul can survive the Mike Tyson as alpha first three rounds, Tyson's going to have a problem. Likewise, Anthony Joshua would have a problem against Tyson Fury. Fury, length, 6'9 guy, with a mobile jab, Fury would be outside. Fury would have a fence around him. Fury would be channeling Larry Holmes. Fury would be hitting him with a jab while moving. Look at the Fury against Vladimir Klitschko. That's if Fury in his mid-30s still has the legs. We're going to find that out in the Usyk fight. Trust me on that. But against Joshua, understand, to beat Tyson Fury, you're going to have to take chances. Deontay Wilder is throwing big straight right hands. Francis Ngannou comes in is hovering around Tyson Fury. Right, Joshua, I believe, is a guy who doesn't want to take those chances. He needs Fidelian White to slow down a little bit. Then Joshua feels comfortable that White fight is important because something personal is going on between the two guys. You know that because Joshua lands a big punch, looks White in the face and purses his lips. You could tell that because of their amateur fight that White won, that that fight was personal for Anthony Joshua. 
Right now, here's the problem, and it's a big problem. Boxing's a young man's game. The sport has moved on from Usyk, Anthony Joshua. Right, Joshua, no doubt, is the box office king of the heavyweight division. But this is a deep heavyweight division. If I'm Usyk, if I continue my career, should I beat Tyson Fury? Because understand, Usyk would then be undisputed at heavyweight. He could walk away from the sport unbeaten, having been undisputed at cruiser and at heavy. Folks, he would be on a short list of the greatest boxer ever. Who would be able to contest that? Beats AJ twice. Beats Dubois. Beats Tyson Fury. Right? It's not as if he's walking in the back door at heavyweight. That first AJ fight was in the United Kingdom. Right? Understand, if Usyk at that stage were to say, okay, I'm going to stay in the sport. Folks, there are other names. Philippe Ergovic. Why wouldn't Usyk want to fight him? Right? Why would the public want a third Usyk AJ fight? Wouldn't Usyk be the favorite in that fight? What leads you to believe that in the first, we'll call it the Mike Tyson part of the fight, the first three rounds, when Tyson is doing things like going through Marvis Fraser, right? What leads you to believe that a third AJ Usyk fight would have a different pattern than the first two? How long were you waiting in the rematch for AJ to actually show some fire? to actually look like he was going to stalk Alexander Usyk. How long did that take, folks? Weren't you waiting until something like the ninth round of that second fight? What leads you to believe that AJ's the kind of guy who in the first three rounds of a third fight against Usyk is going to come out like George Foreman? Is going to come out and say, hey, I'm alpha, I'm coming forward, you want to hit me with big shots? Let's go. I have mine ready. Let's make this World War III out the gate. Folks, personality is a powerful thing. AJ has a new style. AJ disposed of Francis Ngannou early. Knocked him down multiple times. All right hands. If the right hand shot is not there and he feels he's fighting a skilled guy, a fury, an Usyk, right? A guy who is going to deny him the angles. A guy who defensively is ready for a straight right hand. A guy who has legs where he's going to move out of the way. A guy who has a resume filled with opponents like Maris Bredis, Murat Gassiev, Glowacki, Dillian White, uh, Deontay Wilder, Vladimir Klitschko. If Joshua feels that he's fighting a mobile, skilled master guy, do you think he's going to take a lot of risk in the first six rounds? I don't. Right? So, let me just say, I understand the trainer perspective. Robert Garcia had it. Derek James had it. Now Ben Davidson has it. Right? The trainers are looking at the films. They're saying, you know what? I have seen this guy in practice, in sparring. I have seen this guy's power. I know this guy knocked out Joe Joyce in the first round of an amateur fight. I know this guy has... A critic like me knows the guy has a great left hook. Right? I know these trainers are saying, you know what? We can beat Usyk with these tools. But folks, personality is involved. Personality matters. 
It's hard to explain why arsonists will show back up to the scene of the fire when the fire department is there. It's hard to explain why some guy without the his legal team would want to talk with the cops about something he actually did. Why would the guy risk lying? Because his personality and his ego are involved. Right? Anthony Joshua is not the risk taker that Tyson Fury is. I could not imagine Anthony Joshua putting both hands behind his back against a Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Tyson Fury has the edge on Anthony Joshua from a personality perspective. Competitive personality. Just like Pat Mahomes, for whatever reason, has the edge on Lamar Jackson. Right? Pat can be on the road. Pat could be going up against a better defense. You understand, in big moments, Pat Mahomes is big time. He has three Super Bowl rings. Lamar Jackson, the reigning MVP, has none. Right? The styles don't match up. Let me just say, too, understand who Usyk is, please. Usyk is like Azuma Nelson. There are a whole group of fighters in the sport who have had to go on the road to fight their biggest fights. So Usyk is fighting Gassiev in Russia. Usyk is fighting Maris Bredis in Lafia. Usyk is fighting Anthony Joshua in the United Kingdom. Right, folks, fighting on the road all the time gives you a certain toughness. You're able to drown out the crowd because you have rarely ever been the house fighter. Right, so understand, Usyk's going to be in the ring with Tyson Fury. He will have studied Tyson Fury. He knows he's the natural southpaw, which takes away Fury's left hand. He understands that he's more coordinated than Fury. He understands that a fellow cruiserweight previously dropped Tyson Fury. That when Fury doesn't have the athletic advantage on an opponent, Fury's in trouble. He also knows, having survived Anthony Joshua over two fights, 24 rounds, that Tyson Fury doesn't hit like Anthony Joshua. Understand, Tyson Fury might not hit as hard as Maris Bredis, who broke Jay Opatia's jaw, who knocked out cold Manuel Char. Right? So, just to understand personalities, boxing is rock, paper, scissors. Let's just say I'm not surprised that Ben Davidson would rather have AJ fight Usyk a third time then fight Tyson Fury a first time. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your thoughts in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me just close by saying this is not to suggest that Anthony Joshua and Lamar Jackson aren't world class. Right? Anthony Joshua is probably a Hall of Famer, folks. Right? I'm not suggesting, you know, Lamar Jackson has won two MVPs. Not one, but two MVPs. I'm not suggesting that these guys aren't future Hall of Famers. Right? What I am suggesting, though, is that gamblers need to think about the personalities. We know who Pat Mahomes is in the second half of Super Bowls, where his team is down by double digits. We've seen that play out more than once. Right? You know, I don't understand 
the folks trying to compare LeBron James with Michael Jordan, right? Understand, they're different personalities. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to put it. They are different personalities. I, I can't even compare Kobe to Jordan, right? They're different personalities. Understand, Kobe lands on the Lakers. Jordan lands on the Bulls when the Bulls were a terrible team. Understand, Kobe is winning championships. He's not even the best player on the team. That's Shaquille O'Neal, right? Jordan doesn't have a Shaquille O'Neal and is getting beaten up by the Detroit Pistons. Jordan realizes he has to hit the weight room to compete, right? Folks, figure out the actual personalities of the individuals and then figure out how they're going to react in certain situations, right? Jordan Fury, folks, I'm just telling you the personalities don't match. Tyson, Jake Paul, Jake Paul can take 20 minutes entering the ring. Jake Paul can put his hand up to his mouth to motion to the crowd. Jake Paul can have the crowd on his side. The first nine minutes of that fight are going to be hell for Jake Paul because Mike Tyson is going to come across the ring. Tyson's going to be moving his upper body. Tyson's premise is that his punching power is something most cannot withstand. Now, if Jake Paul is a Vander Holyfield level, <laughs> if Jake Paul looks at Tyson and has his own story. One involves getting jobbed at the Olympics, coming up the hard way, getting a title fighting tough dudes, Dwight Cowie, Hall of Famer, Ricky Parkey, right? Then entering the heavyweight division, fighting the likes of Foreman, fighting Larry Holmes, right? If Jake Paul can channel Evander Holyfield, okay, great. He might be able to get inside on Mike Tyson, might be able to do some things. If he's the risk taker Danny Williams was, okay, great. Round four, when he's still standing, Tyson's in trouble. Folks, we're going to find that out. Let's just say we know that if Mike Tyson is not alpha, Tyson's in trouble. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. And for crime videos, if you're into talk on personality and mistakes people make, give my crime channel a look. The podcast is thewirecrime.blog. Here on YouTube, it's Esquire777. Thanks for stopping by.